2 Corinthians chapter 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10 and 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10 and 11. The title message is Knowing the Terror of the Lord. Knowing the Terror of the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. The Bible says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade man, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are, manifest, are made manifest in your consciences. Brother Kelvin, can you please pray for the message? Thank you, Lord, uh, for today that we get to gather here and worship you and to hear the preaching, Lord. Uh, Lord, I just um, thank you for Bible Believing Church. Thank you for the King James Bible. Thank you for using Dr. Ruffman, Pastor Kim, and all the pastors and uh, Bible Believing teachers for preserving um, the King James Bible, the true Word of God. Lord, thank you for that they don't compromise, Lord, and thank you for their perseverance and uh, holding the truth, Lord. So we're just so blessed that we get to come to um, a church that teaches the true word of God, Amen. rightly dividing the word. Lord, I just pray that you continue to protect our church and continue to protect our pastors, teachers, Lord, in this ministry. And Lord, I just thank you for um, our salvation, Lord. And Amen. Lord, I just pray that we stay focused on you and stay true to our course. Lord, it is true that you know, life is nothing but a vapor, and we're here for a while, and then it vanishes, Lord. But, Lord, we thank you that everything we do during this brief moment, you will remember it for eternity, Lord. And, Lord, just thank you that we get to serve you, we get to share the gospel still. And, Lord, at this time, I just pray that you fill Pastor Jay with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Allow him to preach with power, authority, and liberty, Lord. Speak to, through him to us, to our hearts, and may we understand the teachings. Give us the wisdom to apply it to our lives. Lord, please um, protect this congregation. Keep us healthy and safe, physically and spiritually. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Knowing the terror of the Lord. As a Bible-believing Christian, and in, when you're in a Bible-believing local church, you will hear this term many, many times. The judgment seat of Christ. The judgment seat of Christ. Before you have found the truth, before you have found the right doctrine, before you have found the King James Bible, many times you will only hear judgment of God. Judgment of God. Because why? You know, new versions, you know, change the word. So people won't know if there is another judgment. I mean, there are seven judgments, by the way, not just one. And when I was going to a secular church out there, you know, they never talk about judgment, let alone judgment seat of Christ for Christians. And again, this is written for Christians like you and me. And this is a judgment for believers, which means that you are not going to escape some form of judgment, you know, after. And I mean, some, you will reap your sins in this life as well. Yes. Your physical body, physical condemnation. However, whatever you've done for the Lord, whether it be good or bad, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, you will be judged for it. I think one of the scariest things for a human being to go through is if they are guilty of certain sins and crimes and standing before a judge. Because from the mouth of judge, you will determine your future. And sometimes, if judge has mercy, you go to prison for a little bit. If judge does not have any mercy, you'll be there for a long time based on the crimes that you committed. Yes. And as Christians, knowing the terror of the Lord. So terror is not a word to play around with, right? right. Terror means, according to Webster's, a state of intense or overwhelming fear. I mean, it's an intense and overwhelming fear. 
When are you intensely fearful? When are you overwhelming fearful, right? I mean, during the war, many soldiers were in, I mean, fearful state. They're full of terror. Why? They have enemies everywhere. Bullets are going back and forth, right? And you get shot by some bullets, and then you get hit, and then you can't walk anymore. And then you hear bombs co coming down everywhere. And before you know it, people around you, you know, they're being dismembered, right? They're just exploding, you know, pieces of bodies, you know, going everywhere. I mean, that will probably keep you in terror, yes. right? That's the terror, type of terror we're talking about. When it comes to the Word of God, when it comes to dealing with Almighty God, you have to have that terror. Amen. You have to be fearful of an Almighty God. Because what is the solution here? If you don't fear God, you're going to fear man. Right. Simple as that. If you don't fear God, you're going to fear the devil. If you don't fear God, you're going to fear the world. If you don't fear God, you're going to fear your flesh. That's why there's only two choices that you and I have to select. Every decision that we make. Am I making this choice because I fear God? If I make this choice because I don't fear God. If I fear mammal, right? If I fear man. It is from the word of God. I know. Every creature in, the, in front of God, they're in awe. And they're in fear of God. I mean, they have this godly fear. You and I are born with it. However, because of our sin, right? Yeah. We're so wicked. Your conscience tells you, hey, fear God. You know, because conscience is your barometer. However, how many times do you actually listen to your conscience? You know? A lot of times you don't listen to conscience. That's why you committed sin in the past. Even right now, when you trust that Christ as your Lord and Savior, Holy Spirit is convicting you. You know, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Yes. Let's turn our Bibles to book of Psalms. Psalms 33. Psalms 33. As you live your life today and knowing the terror of the Lord, you have to understand that fear of the Lord should be basic. It's the most basic characteristic that we should have as a Christian. Something that we have to you know, embody, something that we have to show, something that we have to practice. Yes. The world's like this because there's no fear of God. Yeah. Amen. That's it. Simple as that. Even during the 50s and you know, before, even before 2000, there were some still fear of God. Not just from Christians, but by unsaved people. They might not, you know, be a believer, but they did fear God. Mm -hmm. Because they knew there was a, you know, supreme being. Yes. But now, if you talk to anybody out there, you know, God is just a figure of speech. Yeah. You know, they don't care about God. They right. take God's name in vain and Lord's name in vain all the time. Yes. Psalms 33, verse 8, the Bible says, Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. I mean, all the earth should fear the Lord. All the earth should be standing in awe of him. Yeah. <laughs> when you were growing up as a child, when you see your dad, right? You know, you're like, oh man, he can do a lot of things that I can't ever imagine doing. You're just little, you know, two feet, three feet tall kid, and your dad is, you know, changing the light bulb, right? Your dad is fixing the cars, you know, fixing everything, you know, doing some stuff, and talking to people. You're like, wow, you know, that's a, that's a cool person, right? Or that's a good role model. Yeah, because a lot of children's role models are their parents. And then when you see that, hey, this is a person who can help as well as who can also punish then you have that fear. So that's why when you know, your parents tell you, don't do it or else you'll be punished because you have that fear of them because you're in awe of them. And this is not a bad thing, right? No. If this is a healthy fear, yes. like, oh, you know, I am not going to mess around with my parents. I'm not gonna mess around with my dad. You know? yes. First of all, you know, he's, uh, to kids' eyes, you know, he's all powerful. You know? He seems like he's everywhere as well. Every time I'm making a mistake or committing something wrong, you know, he somehow shows up somewhere, right? 
You know, he has a supernatural sight and supernatural hearing. You know, I'm eating something I'm not supposed to, he shows up, right? You know, I'm touching something I'm not supposed to, he shows up, you know, and then you're like, you know, I'm in awe with this person. And as a Christian, you have to understand, Almighty God is at a different level, beyond our understanding level. Yes. I mean, if you're fearful as you're growing up of your parents, how much fearful should you be after you've gotten saved, especially of Almighty God, creator of the universe, who's omnipotent, you know, omniscient, right? And he's everywhere all-knowing. But your actions do not show it. And when all the creatures are in fear of God, there's one creature who just don't want to be in fear of God. Yeah. That's you and me. Amen. That's human being. Yes. You know, yes. part of it is that we do have free will, right? right. You know, the Lord's never going to force you to fear him. It's got to come from you. Yes. So when we go back to our verse, you know, verses here in 2 Corinthians 5, 10 and 11, you know, let's get some basic doctrine out of the way, right? So when we're talking about judgment seat of Christ, who is going to be judged, right? You know, Christians, you know, you know people who accepted Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior. You know, in the past, your sin were judged at Calvary, right? In the present, you're judged as a son, right? as a child of God, chastened by father when you are disobedient. Okay, you know, we use this verse many times. You know, Romans 8, 13, if you live after the flesh, you shall die, right? You'll be judged. But in the future, you'll be judged as a servant in the judgment seat of Christ, giving your full account to your master for your Christian service. So your Christian service will be judged, whether it be good or bad. And you will hear other judgment as well, right? Great white throne judgment. That's like the only judgment that people really know about. Oh, great white throne judgment, right? But those are for unsaved people, yes. right? Because these Bible correctors out there change the word of God, they change, you know, judgment seat of Christ to judgment seat of God. So it completely takes away judgment seat of Christ from people's understanding. I mean, of course, devil does not want you to worry about any judgment, let alone judgment seat of Christ. If you are aware of judgment seat of Christ as a Christian, your life will change. Yes. If I, you know, steal, and I know I'm not supposed to steal, and I know I'm going to be judged for it, then I'll think twice before I do it. But it's like, you know what? You know, there's no reason for me to be judged, so... Even though I shouldn't steal, I'm just going to steal because there's no repercussion, you know. That's how the new Bibles, the devil's Bibles, you know, change people. You know, there's so many Christians out there who does not, I mean, they don't know the right doctrine. So they think that they could do whatever they want after they get saved. Yeah. You know, they're like, ah, you know, I'm going to heaven. You know, why should I, you know? Try to live holy. I, I want to live my life. I, I have things to worry about. My education, you know, I have, you know, I have, I have the world to worry about. You know, I have things to worry about. And they will actually come with verses from the Word of God. Wrong verses, right? Contaminated verses, perverted verses. Hey, see? Look at it. You know. I mean... We went over it like on Wednesday, but let's go to Romans, Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8. That's why it is very important for you and I to understand that when people are blinded by wrong versions of the Bible, devil's Bible, they're going to come up with wrong doctrines very easily, and they're going to stand on those doctrines, and it will help them justify sinful ways. It will help him justify to live a sinful life. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Bible says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Jesus Christ. The so new versions get rid of the second part completely. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So there is a condition. If you don't want to be condemned, and again, this condemnation is 
physical body condemnation is not eternal condemnation. Once you're saved, you're saved forever. Woo! So don't ever forget that. Amen. Because people will use this verse, you know, against John chapter 3 verses. They're like, yeah, you know, like if you don't live right after you get saved, you're going to burn in hell. No. The work by salvation. They bring it up. And they can kind of show it because their Bible is kind of matching it, right? right. But that's exactly what devil wants people to do. But we have a condition. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Again, as a Christian, when you trust Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're in the spirit now. Amen. You're not in the flesh anymore. Yes. You have a new man. Simple as that. And if you do not walk after the flesh, then you will live. If you walk after the flesh, you will die. Amen. I mean, it is a very simple you know, analogy. It's logical sequence. Yes. You, know, you trust in Christ, you're going to heaven. However, you're going to live here on earth. Until you see the Lord, you know, you're going to do something good or bad for the Lord right. in your physical body. And the Bible says, you trust in Christ. You're not in the flesh. You're in the spirit. However, if you live after the flesh, you're going to die. So live for Christ, you live. Live for your flesh, the devil, and the world, you die. You know, that's why there's a simple solution for Christians. right? If you want to die, just live after the flesh. You say, I hate this world. You know, I can't stand this world. And it's for wrong reasons. Many times because you created that situation because of your sins. Lord never blesses me when I go gambling. Wow. Lord never blesses me when I'm, you know, drinking. Yeah. Lord never blesses me, you know, when I talk bad about other people. Oh, Everybody wow. does it, right? You know, Lord never blesses me when I'm critical. <laughs> I mean, Brother Caleb preached about, you know, critical spirit like a couple of weeks ago. I mentioned that. That was good. It's, it's so funny as a Christian. When you are being critical of a brother and sister, Lord gets your attention right away. If you are really close with the Lord. If you're not close with the Lord, you're just going to continue and continue. You're going to be chast chastised by the Lord. However, if there's any sense in you where having right relationship, relationship with Lord Jesus Christ is your priority, when you start saying the stuff that you're not supposed to, the Lord's going to get a hold of your attention. You gotta be convicted. Yes. Even if you think that you're saying the right stuff, you know, the Lord's gonna put a break on you. Amen. You know, he's gonna get your attention. Amen. You know, maybe you're driving, suddenly some debris comes at your, you know, windshield, right? And then you're like, oh man, what was it? Why what did it happen, right? I before you know it, you're talking about some brother and sister, you know, and then you're gossiping, right? Wow. You know, it just happens. Or you're like suddenly, like, you know, some car tries to swerve into you, right? That you, you have to like wake up. See, there's, there's no excuse for you and me because God will cover every basis at the judgment seat of Christ. Yes. So that every mouth will be stopped. Not just unsaved people, saved people. Everything that you done for the Lord, whether it be good or bad, you're gonna be judged. Right. And who is the judge, right? Who is going to be the judge of you and I? At the judgment seat of Christ, it's Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who is your Savior, who is my Savior, who dwells in us, yes. the creator of the universe, will be the judged. Man, isn't that a scary thing? Yes. When you think about it, I mean, we love the Lord. The Lord loves us. But he is also holy God. Yes. He is also just God. He is also fair God. Excellent. He is also someone who actually had to shed all of his blood for us. I mean, think about what he had to go through to save you and me. His flesh was torn apart. He was without figure. You couldn't recognize the person. That's how much he was tortured, right? I mean, when you think about, you know, someone going through a certain pain and suffering, I mean, Lord went through it more than anybody ever. On top of that, you know, he had to die of one of the, I mean, the most painful death on the, 
you know, cross, shedding his precious blood. And you think that you could get away with any sin? I mean, even the tiniest sin when he's the judge? When he's like, you know what? I went through all the temptations. I defeated them all. And when you trusted me as your Lord and Savior, I said, I'll give you strength. I'll give you way to defeat it. Amen. But you neglect it. You just follow the world of flesh and the devil. How can I, at this judgment, show any mercy when all the mercy was shown when you're living here on earth? How can I show you mercy when sinners are sent down to hell right. at the white throne judgment? There's no more mercy at the judgment right now, right? I mean, that's why you have to take care of God's mercy right now, yes. here, while you are alive. Yes. Lord Jesus Christ, who is going to be a judge, it's not going to be someone that you see on those, you know, pictures out there. Like, a, you know, kind of like a feminine person out there, you know. Right. I mean, he's going to be a scary person. Yes. I mean, it's going to be, if you think about like a real dictator, dictator, authoritarian, that's him. Yes. Amen. I mean, then he's going to be the judge. And every Christian is going to be present at that judgment. I mean, every Christian. I mean, Romans 14, 10 says, but why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgments that are Christ. You know, this is, they changed the verse to judgment seat of God. But Romans 14, 10 says, all the saved people will be at the judgment seat of Christ. You and I will be there together. Can you believe it? Millions, if not billions of Christians will be there. Amen. Up in the air. <laughs> I mind you, I mean, I don't, I don't really want nobody else to see my sins, right? But can you imagine if millions, if not billions of people are seeing everything that you've done wrong after you've gotten saved? I'm ashamed. Man, that's why you know what's going to happen? Let's go to Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14. Now, I'm not here trying to do a scare tactic on you, no. This is a... Healthy fear, this is a rightful thing that you and I have to do. Yes, sir. And have to have in our heart. Amen. Romans chapter 14, verse 11. Let's go to verse 10 that we just read. The Bible says, But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me. And every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Yes. Every Christian, you and I, will be bowing down, confessing Amen. to our Lord and Savior. And give our account. And all the Christians will be present. That is scary. Yes. I mean, that, is, that will bring terror into my heart. You know, as a human being, what's like really, really, really scary for you? When people find out your sin. Yes. Right? Say you've been hiding sin from your mom and your dad. Right? You're, you've been hiding your sin from your parents. And then, you know, you're a junior high, high school kid. Maybe, you know, just typical sins, right? Doing drugs, you know. Drinking, you know, sleeping with somebody, you know. But then, one day, you thought you were getting away with it. Man, I mean, your parents find out, you know, marijuana in your room. Suddenly, you didn't even realize it. You thought you were getting away with it. Someone comes to your door and asking for some money. Asking for, hey, where's, where's money for the... Drug, Ooh. right? Some drug dealer shows up, right? And suddenly, well, I mean, your parents see you at an abortion clinic, 
uh, it's random. You thought, you know, it's a school time, my parents are working, you know, but, you know, I done wrong, and then you went to clinic to get rid of your baby, and then suddenly, out of the blue, your parents just happen to drive in front of it, and then catches you there. Well, what goes to your mind if you were in that shoes, right? You gotta be terrified. You gotta be scared, right? Because you got caught, right? But at the judgment seat of Christ, it's not about being caught, right? You're already, 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 you know, there. And then when everybody else sees it, right? And we don't know the exact details. But imagine everybody, just everybody here, you know, here sees all the things that you never gotten right with the Lord. That's why 1 John 1, 9 is very important, brethren. Amen. You're preparing, you're preparing yourself for the judgment set of Christ. I mean, if you don't confess your sins, it's got to be revealed. I mean, you got to be punished here as well as you got to be punished afterwards. I mean, I don't want that. I'd rather be punished once. And I don't want that to be, you know, showing in front of millions, if not billions of people. As I bow down, as my, I'm crying my tears out, and I'm just confessing to the Lord, Jesus is Lord. Lord, you are Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. Because verse 12 says what? So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Everyone. I mean, it's not just, you know, the preacher. It's not just the fathers and mothers. It's not, you know, just some missionaries out there. Everybody. Even if you got saved and you died after like a 30 minutes, you're going to give account of yourself to God. Right? You are going to give account of yourself to God. Now you know the description. I mean, think about the time. You know, it's going to take place between the rapture and second coming of Jesus Christ. And in that time, think about it. Time with God is not time with us, right? right. So he'll get through everybody. Don't worry. you like, you know, I've gotten saved a little later. You know, if it goes by, you know, sequential order, I think I'll be okay. Maybe it will run out. No, it's not. You are going to be judged the same Christian as the first Christian. Everything will be judged. And at that point, what do you think? All the work that you've done for Christ or for yourself will be made manifest. It will be shown. Man, you know, you think about when you got saved. Because you know, I believe everyone's saved here. Some people were saved this year, some people were saved last year, and some people were saved last decade, and some people were saved last century, right? You know, I, mean, I was saved last century, so I have a lot to answer to God for, right? And think about how many days and how many hours and how many minutes and how many seconds have gone by after you've gotten saved. It's growing and growing and growing. And for everything that I ever done, it's going to be manifest. Everything that I've done is going to be judged. Man, that's, that's, a, that's a tough thing to handle. Amen. I mean, when I didn't give thanks to God for something, I'm going to be judged. You know? And why I didn't witness to someone, I'm going to be judged. When I said something inappropriate, I'm going to be judged. You know, little lies there, I'm going to be judged. When I didn't speak up for the Lord, I'm going to be judged. I mean, every little thing, I'm going to be judged. When I wrongfully, you know, criticize someone, I'm going to be judged. You know, when I joined in something that I shouldn't have, I'm going to be judged, right? Every little thing, when I shouldn't have stayed at the website, you know, even though it was a, you know, pop-up, you know, what, what is it, like, you know, junk stuff come up? Yes. I should have just, you know, closed it, went to, you know, whatever I was doing. I'm going to be judged. Amen. Everything that I've seen, everything that I've heard, everything that I've thought, I'm going to be judged for everything since you got saved. That's a scary thing. And if you do not get right with the Lord, if you have not confessed every single sin after you've gotten saved, and I'm not saying you have to go to a priest, right? 
they're not going to help you, right? Amen. You're going to just increase it, right? You have to go to the Lord. That's right. And you have to ask the Holy Ghost to help you remember everything. I mean, if you're sincere and if you are, you know, doing it from bottom of the heart, the Lord's going to help you remember so that you could get right with him. And if you are a type of person who took sin lightly, who didn't even think about judgment instead of Christ, what do you think is happening to you? Man, you're just increasing, increasing your bad side of the award continuously. Do I remember what happened like back in the late 90s, everything that I've done wrong for the Lord? Man, I can. But you know what? The Lord can help me remember. You know, I mean, isn't it weird? Sometimes uh, you're doing something and suddenly you remember something from yes. like 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Man. Oh, man, I remember. Man, that was, that was not good. Man. And then if you know when you got saved, you're like, oh, man, I've done that after I got saved. You know? I was still a new baby Christian, but Lord, you know, I confess my sin and I, I turn away from it. Please forgive me yes. from bottom of heart. Then Lord said, if we confess our sins, his faith went just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's the Lord's promise. But you have to take action. You have to do something. Yes. Just because the Bible verses is there, if you don't do anything about it, then it's just like, you know, when you're hungry, there's a cake flying in front of you and you're just watching it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a, lot of, a lot of people, right? A lot of people have that mindset. They're always at the gate with the crowd, but they never go any further. They have this mob mentality. They always go together until you don't get hurt, until you don't have to be exposed, until you don't have, have to really share your opinion, right? We see it. Whenever there's a lot of protests, you always have you know, a couple of cuckoos out there, right? You know? But the rest of them are just, when they see some you know, opportunity to escape, they go. You know? They go their way. Like, oh, there's going to be too much traffic with all these protesters. I'm going to go early, OK? You guys finish the job, OK? I'm going to go early. You know, that's, that's like people's mindset. But as Christians, you can have that. If you're at the, I guess, gate where you're about to solve all your sin problems, you've got to stay there. Amen. It might take hours. It should take hours because none of us are perfect. Right. I mean, I, I've been saved longer than many people who got saved in the year 2000 and later, right? Yes. Then I should be staying a lot longer, yeah? Because, you know, I probably accumulated a lot more sins. Then, but you don't even do it during daily. You don't even confess your sins on a daily basis. How do you expect to even, you know, think about sins from the past? Your attitude is already messed up. You know, when you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, that was a transforming event. Yes. I mean, you could change inside out. A lot of people just want reformation. They just want you to change a little bit outside. But when you're not changed from inside, you never change completely. Amen. But when you trust that Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're a new creature. Amen. You have opportunity to really, really get right yes. on a daily basis. Then why aren't you doing it? Why aren't you examining yourself? Why don't you go to the Lord on a daily basis? Why don't you look back 24 hours instead of, I don't know, mass weeds, you know, what's a 10? I mean, 10 years, 3,650 days, right? Times 24 hours, times 60 minutes, times 60 seconds. Much. I mean, but think about it. But Lord's so precise. Yes. He's going to judge every second. Amen. Every millisecond. We're struggling right now, yeah. Yeah. trying to even add, you know, few days and few hours. For to the Lord, he's playing it right in front of you. Now, you know, the year 10 when you got saved, or year 3 when you got saved, year 3, day number 2, you know, <laughs> 1,200 hours, you know, and then 15 seconds, and then he goes so deep, you know. I'll give you one more, you know, 10 milliseconds. 
this is what you're thinking, this is what you're doing. How come you never confessed that sin? How come you never got them right with the Lord? Man, at that point, all of us are just bowing down. Yeah. You can't, we can't even look. Shame. Because what Lord's playing is perfect and, you know, yes. we can't even deny it. You know, a lot of times, you know, these days when people get into car accident, and at first, people at fault will say, oh, I'm sorry. And then they go back and they'll say, I didn't do it, oh. you know. Yeah. But if you have the evidence, if you have like, you know, dashboard cam or something, you play it and then their mouth is shut, you know. Yes. That's what's going to happen to us. Our mouth will be shut over and over and over. And can you imagine if you're that person who just didn't care about, you know, living for Christ? You just live a sinful life all your life. And then every day you have, you committed like, you know, tens, hundreds of sins. And then it's just going to be playing for everything. Yes. Oh, man. That's going to be a very, very fearful time. Your work will be manifest. Every word that you use will be judged, right? Useless words, cursing, mm -hmm. swears, you know. Yes. But also witnessing, praising God and those prayers. Amen. Everything will be judged. And all your secrets will be judged. Yes. You know, don't tell me you got no secrets, right? You have some secrets, right? Yes. Things you do when no one's watching you, every yes. one of them will be judged. You know, this day and age, it's worse. You have a lot more opportunity to do things when people are not watching. Amen. Right? Because of phone, right? Because of cell phone. True. You could do so many things when people aren't watching. You could make your screen darker, right? So that people can really see. You know, so people have, uh, people have protective screens, <laughs> right? Because they don't want people to see what you're doing. Yes. And I mean, if it's not like work or some very important personal information related, then you have it because you're doing something dirty and right. foolish. Simple as that, right? I mean, as a kid, should you have a protective screen in front of your parents? No. I mean, never. No. What do you got to hide from your parents? No. Your social media account with your boyfriend and girlfriend? You know, illegitimate, I mean, illegitimate you know, right. relationship, yeah. you know? Or like all these, you know, very, very wicked clubs out there. Yes. I mean, your pride. I know a lot, a lot of you guys, because I'm part of it. You guys are secret, secretly very proud person. You know, in front of the people, you're like humble. You know, you're like, oh, sister, I am so blessed by you. Brother, I'm so blessed by you. But deep inside, the circuit to people have this pride. How dare he? How dare she, you know, you know, trump me, right? All those things got to be judged. Yes. I mean, you are to love your brethren, admonish your brethren, encourage your brethren. But envy and jealousy, all those secretive thoughts will be judged, right? You know, I don't know about other cultures, man. One of the worst things about Korean and Asian culture is that they are so envious. Even if it's their family, if something good happens to them, if it does not happen to them, they're not happy. <laughs> Outside, they're like, congratulations. But deep inside, oh, I hate you, you know? <laughs> like, I did not get the promotion. I did not get the house. I did not get the whatever it is, right? Like, oh, man. I love you, but I hate you, you know? It's, uh, it's like so, I don't know, it's like usually family-oriented cultures are like that. Individualistic cultures, they're usually okay. And a lot of American cultures, you know, I, don't, I know a lot of things have changed because of advancement of technology and social media because everybody wants what they see and everybody wants to show off everything that they do now yes. through social media. So mindset have kind of changed and it's coming together for the wrong reasons. But it used to be, right, someone, something good happens to someone that you know, you're very happy for them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're more happy for them than themselves because you truly care for them. But when was the last time, you know, you, were you really truly joyful and happy for your brethren when something good happens to them, right? I mean, just simple things. Someone 
was unemployed, but they finally got a job. Lord bless them because they work hard. Are you happy for them? Or are you the type that just criticize? I'm glad I never had to be in that situation. Man, because I went to school, but that person didn't go to school. Wow. Man, education, you know, very, very bad thing to rely on, right? Yes. I mean, I, mean, I went to, you know, some of the post high schools, I guess, I don't know, what is it, like college or graduate school? I mean, did not help me at all. Zero. Right. I haven't retained any knowledge from any of those classes, <laughs> right? I just have a degree, that's it. Yes. So I can't be like, you know, I'm better than you. No, I mean, there's nothing to show for it, right? So if someone in this room or hearing thinks you're proud because you have education, man, you gotta be judged for it. Definitely, you gotta be punished for it. It doesn't matter, man. You could have a degree from Ivy League, man. What's that going to do? You're going to take it to your grave? No. You're going to take it to judgment seat of Christ? <laughs> Lord, I have this degree. That allows me to commit a certain sin and excuse myself. Lord, I mean, of course, you're not even going to be able to do that, right. right? That's why you have to understand. This thing is, to me, is one of the biggest things that you and I will be judged. All of the secret thoughts. Amen. Because you think that just because you didn't show to people, you're free of it, free of you know, any judgment, wrong. You gotta be judged for every secret thought. Yes. I mean, every single one of them. And right now, my, I mind you, I mean, you're, you're going through so many thoughts right now, even right now, yes. right? And if they're not godly thoughts, every one of them's gotta be judged. And then we could have what? I don't, I don't know if there's been a study. We could have maybe thousands of tens of thousands of thoughts, even hundreds of thousands of thoughts that we go through on a daily basis. Yes. And again, and you're going to multiply that by every single day and moment that you've been saved, and it's going to be judged. So Christians, you better watch out. You better definitely resolve all the secrets that you have in your mind, yes. in your heart. Because if you don't, then you got to be judged one way or the other. And you got to be judged for your witnessing. This is given. If you do not witness for Jesus Christ, you'll be judged. I mean, famous verse, Ezekiel 3.18 says, When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning. As Christians, you and I are supposed to witness so that we could tell loss out there, that you're going to burn in hell if you don't trust Jesus Christ. Amen. It's a warning, and it's a gospel. Nor speak is to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. Yeah, they're going to burn in hell, right? However, but his blood will lie required at thine hand. Think about it. His blood. I don't know about you. I don't like blood. I don't even want to see blood. Even little tiny cuts to me, it's like puncture to me. Because I feel like, you know, those bloods are gushing out. Yeah. But imagine all the souls that you neglected, you did not warn, you did not talk to them about Jesus Christ. You didn't even give a gospel. You didn't give a gospel track. You'll be judged. And their blood will be required at your hand and my hand. I mean, just imagining it is, you know, it's scary in itself. But you're going to be judged for it. How are you going to face that judgment at this current state if you don't get right with the Lord? So first thing you have to do is what? You have to go to the Lord right away. I mean, today. I mean, you have to go. Amen. And you have to resolve all your sin problems. Yes. You have to confess your sins. Ask the Holy Ghost to help you remember the sins that you have not confessed. You have to really do it from the bottom of your heart. Amen. And secondly, think about who you're serving. You're serving Lord Jesus Christ who died for you. Yes. Let's turn to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. It's not something that we do it 
and we have to do it because someone's forcing us to do it. We do it from the bottom of our heart because who he is. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Verse 4. You know what? Let's start from verse 1. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. This should be our model every single day. This should be how we live our life. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life? Who's our life? Is your mom your life? Is your wife your life? Is your husband your life? Is your children your life? The Word of God says, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall we also appear with him in glory. Our life is not us. Our life is Jesus Christ. Amen. You can never forget that. You know, judgment seat of Christ is coming. We know the tear, but it's not going to be something that we're not going to look forward to if Christ is our life. Everything from morning, noon, nighttime, whenever you're out there, whenever you're at home, your life is just Christ. Amen. When you know that my life is Christ's life, then every action that you take will be for Christ. That's it. I mean, everything. When, that's when you, know, when you read the verse, right? Whether it be good or bad, you know, when you're doing for Christ, it's going to be good. You know, I could guarantee you that. You know, when you're doing something for Christ without, you know, secret mind of being proud, stubborn, showy, but doing it from genuinely out of your heart, then it's going to be good. And that's the solution. You know, like, how do I live life, you know, to stand at the judgment seat of Christ, you know, without being, you know, reprimanded, punished for every single sin, you know, because I do want to live for Christ. Then think of it like this. You know, Christ is my life. You know, when, Christ, when someone is your life, your life revolves around that person. I mean, mothers, right? Thank God for mothers. Yeah. Your life is your child, especially after they're born. It's, they're your life. You have to watch them 24-7. You have to feed them 24-7. You have to change them 24-7. You have to make sure that they're healthy 24-7. You're watching them 24-7, right? Yeah. Every opportunity. If Christ is your life, I mean, shouldn't you be watching Christ every moment of your life? Yes. Through prayer, through word of God, through witnessing. Can Christ see that he's your life? I mean, if you're not doing anything for Christ, how can he see that he's your life? Amen. Right? If I stand for something, if I say, let's see, let's pick a person, right? I mean, it's hard to pick a person nowadays. They're all so wicked, right? You know? <laughs> let's just say, you know, your spouse, okay? You know? And then don't let your spouse be above your Lord Jesus Christ, right? Say your spouse is your life, right? And then you do everything. Your life depends and then revolves around your spouse, right? And then if your spouse sees that, hey, this person is doing everything for me, right, for my benefit, for my glory, for my well-being, and for my happiness, then they could see it through your actions, right, and through your thoughts as well. Human being could realize it, right? I'm asking, you know, any husband and wife here, you know, right? If you're not your husband and wife's life, you're neglected. They don't talk to you. You know, there's no love for you, right? You're just a person. You know, they call it roommate, right? They're just a roommate living together. Christ cannot be a roommate, Amen. right? He shouldn't be someone, you know, hey, I accepted you, Lord, so you just live there, you know. You're my roommate. You know, I'm going to do everything else, right? He's got to be you, your life. Like when I look at you, when you look at me, he should be it. Amen. If this verse is so foreign to you, then you're so backslidden, that's why. Right. There's no other ways to explain it. And then you just have to admit it. 
I mean, I think being a Bible-believing Christian, the best thing is that we have opportunity to get right any moment, any day, as long as we could breathe, Amen. as long as we could think right, right? Then you got to do it. I mean, you got to be like, Lord, you know, Bible says you're my life, but I didn't live my life, especially recently, especially as long as I remember, you know, I just treated you as someone like roommate, someone I just praise you or, you know, worship you part time. But I want you to be my life. That's it. Then when you change your Christian life in that way, then judgment is of Christ. Even though you'll be terror, even though you'll be fearful, at least you know that you've done best for the Lord because he's your life. When something is your life, I guarantee you do best. If work is your life, you got to do your best, right? If gambling is your life, you got to do your best. If drinking is your life, you got to do your best. If it's, you know, drug is your life, you got to do your best, right? If you, education is your life, you're going to do your best, right? If Christ is your life, no if and buts about it, you're going to do your best for the Lord. Yes. Through all conversation, your actions, your thoughts, and everything from your heart will be what? Based on the life that you live for Christ. Because why? He's in you, and he is you, and he's your life. Let's pray. Dear Father, we know the terror of the Lord that's coming. It is going to be fearful. It's going to be, I don't even know, Lord God. I mean, after... I got to say, after we got to say, Lord, how many days have gone by when, just, when we neglected our Christian walk and we just did not serve you? You weren't part of our life, Lord. I mean, you, we didn't consider you our life, even though you are in us, Lord. Help us to get right before it's too late, Lord God. Help us to understand. And remember, the judgment seat of Christ is coming to us, and you're coming back very soon, Lord. Help us to not be that person who heard the warning but didn't take action. Help us to take action right away starting today, Lord. Bless the rest of the service, Lord. And even so, come Lord Jesus. He wants to see you today, right now, Lord God. Even so, come Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.